Sadravo, hola, and what up, home skillet? Hey, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and I'm back here on Rocket Stove Row to attempt something I have never tried before. That's making a grill top for a rocket stove. And I'm actually going to use this rocket stove, the concrete and perlite rocket stove, which is the reason that most of you are watching this video. This stove build is my most popular video here on YouTube. Thank you for watching. And yes, it did crack when I fired it. I've got this metal band around it to hold it in place, and I think this is gonna function like an expansion crack. So what I'm concerned about today is the business end of this stove. The reason I haven't ever tried grilling on a rocket stove is these things put out intense heat, kind of in one spot, like a rocket. I just assumed I'd be turning a really nice steak into a piece of charcoal. <laughs> But, I'm going to give this a try. The method I'm going to use is to make a heat sink. A plate of steel with low sections and high sections to function like a grill without letting any of the fire through. But I'm also going to add a feature to allow some of the smoke or a secondary source of smoke to season the meat. That's where we get a lot of the flavor when we grill is from the wood itself. Since we're not going to be getting any direct fire or smoke from the wood, I'm going to add a secondary source, a smoker, if you will, to this grill. All right, let's get some measurements, get started. Materials for my project are going to be some bar stock that I picked up at the drop room at my local metal supermarket. In between that, I'm going to use some round stock I picked up at a local recycling event. And for my smoker, I'm going to use this scrap of one inch steel pipe. For my smoke, I'm going to use these hickory pellets. You've seen me use these Ryobi tools before and they're actually a great investment for any shop. Ryobi is not a sponsor of this video, but I like these enough and they're reliable and accessible enough that I'm comfortable recommending them. Of course, Ryobi, if you like what you're seeing here, give me a call. I did add to my Ryobi tool set recently, picking up a small metal bandsaw, and I found it on sale for 125 bucks. So yeah, an investment, but it'll save me a whole lot of grinding, certainly on this project. This is a good spot to mention the sponsor of today's video, which is my tummy, because it's been a while since I've had a nice juicy steak. start by processing and cleaning up my round steel. I'm going to keep the welcome sign intact because I think I might use that. That's a whole lot faster than the grinder. You're welcome. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and clean up all of this round stock because I know that's the way I'll want to use it when I do. I'm just not going to make you watch it all. Yeah, that's probably enough. And JW will be happy to know I was wearing my ear protection and respirator. This will provide the top edge of my grill. And then the round stock is going to go in between it like this. That will make the underside of this flat, which will allow it to sit on my pot standoffs evenly. On the front side, I'm going to put a little bit of plate here just to kind of act as a heat shield. The fire will be coming out around all the sides of this and I kind of want to keep it from coming out the front because that's going to be where I'm standing with my spatula.
I'm gonna cut some smaller pieces of this as well because I am gonna leave a few holes between the thicker bar to let some of the fire through. All right, battery's running out, but I think I got enough. When I bought this bar, I bought all that they had in the drop room. And I got some more that's this size. So I'll have to make a few adjustments for that to keep this thing even. All right, let me see if I've got the width that I need. That looks like eight inches to me. With a couple to spare, let's measure it. A little under eight. Adding one of these gets me to eight. I don't want to round on the outside, so I'm gonna go with that dimension. All right, I'm gonna clean up the metal before I weld. Now we weld. I'm paying special attention to this gap right here because that's where the smoker is going to connect. I wanna make sure I have enough space to feed it and for the smoke to come out. I'll do this kind of gap on both sides of this center rail. My fire ports are going to be on the outside edges. That looks better. This is actually the perfect project for me to practice my welding. <laughs> Joining two pieces of metal together like this, a long bead. I can already see improvement from one side of this bar to the next. It's gonna be nearly impossible to get the weld down inside that groove. So I'm gonna flip this over and weld from the back. I think what I decided I'm going to do is tack from the top side and then do my beads on the bottom. Since my goal is a massive heat sink for this grill, I'm going to brush my welds but not grind them. got the gauge dialed up all the way for what this welder will do and it's definitely the welds are definitely sinking in a lot more still needs more practice though I had to change my approach a bit when I got to the shorter pieces of bar
gonna trim off a few of the ends sticking out here and then weld on the last bar. Some of these I'm gonna have to get with a grinder. All right, all right, that's gonna soak up some heat. I'm gonna clean up the top here and level out one low spot. Now I'm gonna clean up my front edge here where I will weld on my flame guard. I'm just gonna tack this on at the ends here. I don't necessarily want heat transfer to the front. For my smoke pipe here, I'm going to open up one end a little bit and close up the other one into a cone. Of course, in the stove itself, this will be inverted. Down into the riser to pick up some heat and start the hickory smoking. It's gonna sit on the grill, or underneath the grill, right here. And the reason I opened it up is, is because the smoke ports were a little bit off center. I'm gonna flatten this area so that I can weld that on. One challenge with battery power tools is if you don't have enough batteries, you're chasing charge, and that's what I'm doing right now. The other thing I'm going to put on the bottom of the grill is three pipe sections to sit over the pot standoffs. I don't want this thing moving around while it's cooking steak. I've made a template that marks where those standoffs are squared to the front of the stove. So I'm going to use that to mark the spots to weld down my legs. I'm going to prep those areas as well. I've notched some of these with the bandsaw and the grinder so they'll fit on that bevel. So I'm gonna tack these in place and then go do a test fit before I weld them down completely. Well, I'm glad I did a test fit because I used my template upside down or I forgot that I was flipping this. So this is actually a mirror image of what I need. I'll spare you the whole retrofit. Took me a few more times to get this right, but now that my legs are in the right position, I'm gonna weld them in. Just three tacks ought to do it. Kinda of reminds me of something out of the movie Robots. Woo! Of course this side reminds me of Kylo Ren. All right, now I'm gonna tack on the smoker. I'm 
I'm also going to close up the gaps in the top. I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit so I don't burn through. I'm gonna close up this opening with a small bit of bar stock. All right, that's a hunk of metal, but I think it'll work. Let this cool down, then clean it up. Ah, this thing is beefy. All right, but it's raining, so I'm gonna have to wait a few minutes before I can fire this up. The radar has the rain stopping here in a few minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this fire started. Wanted to show you how the grill fits on the top of the stove. Nice and level. This front plate here could probably have functioned as the front two legs. But the nice thing is that it also fits on my fire brick rocket stove. So depending on how I want to use this, I have options. But for today, we're gonna to be over here. All right, so before the rain started, I actually stashed some wood so it would stay dry. I'm gonna build a fire and get this started. Trevor's here, holding the umbrella. Thank you, son. You're welcome. So JW sent me this blowtorch, which is now my favorite way to light my rocket stoves. Thanks, JW. Fire's coming up really nicely underneath the grill. I actually meant to put the my smoke chips in before this starting this, so I'm gonna do that now. This would have been a lot easier to do before this was started, but Letting the fire die down just a little bit while I load this up. And then I'm gonna season the grill with some. All right, this is probably enough for me to know whether or not the smoker's gonna work. All right, so I'm gonna get my steak out here and I, I'm guessing because of the Corona, I couldn't find fresh cut. So, um, although this true looks pretty good, no antibiotics, no hormones, no preservatives. Vegetarian fed, sounds tasty. Wash my hands after the welding. Some nice marbling in that. All right, so I'm gonna season this with just a little salt and pepper. Trader Joe's Himalayan pink sea salt. I'm also going to bring out a little olive oil to season the grill. So olive oil going on. Go ahead and season that front plate as well. This will actually be the preservative, keeps it from rusting. All right, I'm gonna get this fire going again. Thank you. 
All right, so the flame guard was a good idea. Definitely got flames coming out the sides and the back, but not the front. Let this heat up just a little bit more. And then we'll put the steak on. Fire is looking nice and hot. The grill is sizzling when the water hits it. I think it's time to put the steak on. That's a nice sizzle. I think you might be getting a little smoke. Oops. Looks like there's some smoke coming up from the port there. Looks good. Decent grill marks on that. I'm going for a medium here. Definitely some smoke coming up. I am happy about this. Trevor, what do you think? It smells good. <laughs> Definitely some good smoke coming out now from the hickory. more flip. Oh yeah, that's good. I guess this rain isn't going to stop. You're right, we're committed to the process. Ah. Special thanks to my patrons for helping make these videos possible. If you'd like to join me over on Patreon, you can click the link in the description below. All right, so this thing is done. Feels like a nice medium. I'm stoked about this. Trevor brought it out a fresh plate. And we're gonna get this inside and cut it up. Woo before I head inside though, I'm gonna hit the grill with just a little bit more olive oil. So as this fire cooks down, it'll season that grill just a little bit more for next time. Oh, yes. Definitely medium rare, but that's okay. Mmm, yummy. I'm happy with that. And I'm happy with that grill too. Sure, you gotta try a bite of this. It's really good. Worth the wait? Worth holding the umbrella for 20 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it's really good. As always, my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share. And subscribe for a new Green Shorts DIY video. And subscribe for a new Green Shorts DIY video almost every Saturday. One more flip. Oh yeah, that's good.